getting ready uh, for a really cool day in Seoul, Korea. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, going to be interesting to see who qualifies this time for the uh, ASL. I'm really hoping uh, Fire Bat Hero is going to take chance or take a chance and get in. Uh, obviously, Fancy doesn't play Brood War anymore. Uh, as sad as that makes me, but Fire Bat Hero is still playing. He was my second favorite Terran. Uh, well, my favorite Terran outside of uh, outside of SKT. So going to be cool to see if he tries to qualify. He barely missed out last time. But either way, back to the SCPL. Uh, we just saw Drag. Oh, I'm sorry. We just saw Tech get taken out by Beast in a very convincing fashion with two Lings actually clenching the deal. Uh, Tech unfortunately dropping the ball a little bit was multitasking, and it certainly showed off. So let's have a quick look at who our next two players are gonna be. And let's have a look at the other lead to see who they are. So for DM, we're going to have the round two hero so far. It's going to be Yaj. Uh, he is currently one for two uh, in this round. He didn't play in round one so far, but he is 1-0 up against Protoss. And he did beat a good Protoss to get where he is. So going to be cool to see how he does here against the Canadian hero himself. Uh, arguably one of the best North American players does race pick ZVP, but luckily enough, it is a PVZ for him here. So he's going to be playing his main race. He is two for two at the moment. He is, of course, the captain of Naz. And uh, he did go two, five for two last round. He's currently two for one up against Zerg. So going to be cool to see how he does here. As we move on to our two-player map of this week's map pool, it's going to be Flight Dreamliner. Now, Flight Dreamliner, of course, spawning from the 2010 Korean Air OSL Season 2. And a uh, really cool map. Very close mains by Air, so really good for shuttle play. Really good for Mutalisks. Uh, very, it's it's strangely a long rush distance by ground. And to actually take more bases, you need to expand out into the map. It reminds me a little bit of Third World. Not entirely though, because uh, there's no sort of semi-islands or anything like that. But there are two island bases, bottom right, and top left, they do both have gas. And in bottom left and top right, we do have those middle only thirds, if the players do choose to go for them. So, let's see how our players are going to do as we move on to our second game of the series. DM versus Naz, Yaj versus Dragon. Let's see how we go. Oops, I didn't unpause the game. There we go. Starting us off here in the right-hand side position. We do have the orange Protoss. It's going to be Dragon. Captain of Naz. And, of course, uh, your Protoss player. And spawning down here in the 6 o'clock position is going to be his opponent. Fighting for DM is currently 1-0 up in the series. Uh, DMR, of course, it's going to be the Purple Zerg, Yaj. Yeah, I'm going to try and pay a little bit more attention to the builds in the start of this game. I sort of went on a rant last time forgetting that Rapid wasn't here uh, to keep an eye on what's going on. Now, it looks like it's going to be a Forge Fast Expand. Judging by the pylon position, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be a gateway, but you will see players sending their probe back, getting those extra minerals if they can, uh, just to sort of keep or get that gateway ever so slightly quicker. Uh, but Dragon, known to do an early scout, it is a two-player map, so stuff like five pool, actually quite potent on here. Not going to be a nine pool, though, from Yaj. He is going to go for at least an overlord. Now, is this going to be over pool? It doesn't look like it. Yes, it is. It's overpool for Yaj. Uh, sort of a middle-of-the-road build. It's not quite as economical as 12 Hatch, of course. It's not as aggressive as 9 pool. Uh, but it is a slightly better build than 12 Hatch, or 12 pool even. So uh, Yaj is going to be feeling pretty good about this. He's going to know that he's been scouted straight away. His Overlord, of course, is going to get to the base very, very quickly as well. Now, is Yaj going to go for an expansion here, or is he going to play aggressive? There's a lot of options that you can go for off of the back of uh, Overpool. 
But it looks like he is going to try and expand. He's pulled two drones here. Just trying to get rid of the probe. To allow him to build that all-important hatchery. It looks like he's missed it ever so slightly. He needs to build the hatchery soon. And there we go. Now the trouble is, unlike something like Fighting Spirit. Where you can immediately go and take another base. Taking a gas base... Uh, with your second drone is actually quite difficult if your natural's blocked. So luckily enough for him, he's going to be able to get that down. Of course, Dragon back at home did go for a forge. He scoured that it was quite a late pull, so he was able to get the Nexus before the cannon, uh, which makes his build a little bit more economically viable. Uh, of course, uh, you can opt to go for cannons first, but obviously it delays your expansion by quite a lot, uh, which all does add up. It delays your pro production as well for a very long time. And now the probe is still alive in the main. Dragon doing a pretty good job keeping that alive. Keeping the scouting going. One of the most important things in Brood War is just getting as much information as possible. Uh, but Yaj looks like he doesn't want to waste any more time. He's heading up to that gas base to take his third. Now, against a build like a gateway first, this is very, very difficult to do. But he's seen the forge uh, with a drone, actually. And he's seen the lack of cannons. So... Uh, Yaj is going to be feeling pretty safe now. Dragon, unfortunately, did lose the probe there. Uh, that going down is causing a bit of an issue for him. But we do have two overlords, interestingly, in the main of Yaj. Uh, in the main of Dragon, even. Just getting double vision over the same thing. Uh, just in case you one overlord isn't enough. Uh, there's going to be another probe coming in. Looks like he was actually doing moving shot uh, micro against this drone. Oh my god, could he actually get that drone with moving shot micro? That's really sick if he does. It uh, looks like he is going to stop following it for now, uh, but that drone is not going to be able to make it home. Uh, Dragon could actually turn around and get this. Looks like he's going to go for it. Can he manage it? This is going to be a huge, huge pickoff. Two more hits. Of course, the drone, when it takes damage, does regen a single bit of health. Now, it looks like the drone may get away, uh, but still, Dragon with a very, very aggressive probe here, trying to get that drone. Doesn't quite manage it, but he will get back into the main. He'll see that there's a lair coming up. Uh, he doesn't quite know about the third hatchery just yet, uh, but he should assume that there should be one somewhere. Of course, Mulus are very powerful on this map, uh, which is likely going to be a Stargate after this Cybernex call. This probe should be building this right away, I would imagine. And there we go. That Stargate not only pushes away the Overlords, it also gives him the ability to deal with any Mutalisks. Of course, it doesn't have to be Mutas or Spire. It could be some weird kind of Hydra all in. Uh, with lurkers, but it doesn't look like we're going to see that just yet. No tech chosen so far by Yanch. He really just wants to take out this probe. Uh, but unfortunately for him, this probe is going to scout this base. And that's a very, very big moment here for Dragon. He sees that there's a, a drone been produced up there as well. Uh, so he is going to feel pretty safe back here with his one cannon for now. He's going to add this Stargate on. This will give him plus one air weapons as well. And uh, this probe being very persistent, going back in, wants to see what tech there is. Now, of course, the lair has finished. Is this going to be a Spire? I believe it is. And yes, it is. So Spire immediately coming up by Yaj. Now, of course, Dragon hasn't seen this just yet, but it's not too important to get that probe there. Better to get that probe back home with those five stolen minerals. Uh, just to be as annoying as humanly possible. Uh, get that economy going a little bit more as well. Every probe does count. Plus one. Attack is coming in for Dragon as well. So, Dragon with his horse, uh, first course here. Going to be able to do a decent bit of scouting. Going to see that there is a Spire coming up. Going to get there before any Scourge can be built as well. Uh, but the important thing for him is to make sure he keeps tabs on not only the Hatchery count, which is now up to 5, but also what units are coming up the Zerg Eggs. He needs to see how many drones are coming in. Uh, and obviously if there's a Hydra down and things like that. Now the first Overlord is going to go down. Dragon needs to make sure he's not too greedy. Every Corsair does matter in PvZ. And uh, back at home, he's just going to be macroing up. Probably will see him add his Templar Archives on pretty soon. He's already bu uh, blocked the probe in behind these pylons. Really, really good job by him. And he's actually going to go for two Overlords before properly scouting so this is a bit dangerous there are going to be two scourge coming out he does get the second overlord he sees the hydralis then he sees the extra hatchery uh, but he uh, now he finally sees the scourge so he's going to try and run away try and juke and jive his way away from the scourge 
Uh, but yeah, as you can see, going in for that entrapment maneuver, is he going to be able to get the first course there? There's going to be a huge, huge moment. Dragon, a little bit too on the ball, though, going to be able to juke past it just there. Uh, but these Corsairs in a dangerous position. One Scourge does hit. Uh, that is going to take out all the shields on that Corsair. Uh, and does do a little bit of hull damage. But Dragon's going to be feeling pretty happy about that. He got two Overlords. He's got up to four Corsairs now. He's going to continue adding those on. Add his Templar Archives. And we should see him starting to flood some gateways. And that's all Dragon really needs to do at this point. Now do we have any Mutalisks coming in? No, it looks like we're going to have Hydralisks. Of course, the Hydro is going to be very, very important in dealing with the Scourge. And I've just realized I am constantly talking. That is why I kill my voice when I'm, uh, when I'm solo casting. <laughs> but it's all good, though. I enjoy it so much, and uh, that's why I've been doing the SCPL for so long. Now, one thing for Yaj is we are going to start to see... A few more upgrades coming in. Going to have plus one attack on the way for his range. Uh, these Corsairs are coming in as all of the Hydras move out to deal with the uh, Zealots. You can see they've had to pull back. The Zealots are going to get free reign over this third base. Dragon with a great two-prong maneuver. Going to come in here. The drone's in a very nice pull, though. These Hydras in a very good position. But it's not going to be enough. Another couple of Hydras coming in. And these Hydras coming in from behind are going to be able to do a decent job, but that's a lot of damage. That's two Overlords, four Overlords going down by these Corsairs, and the Corsairs are going to get away. One Scourge does connect. A lot of drones have gone down. Uh, the Zealot's actually still alive, and Dragon doing a great job with his aggression. Uh, going to get his Corsairs away and some of these Zealots, plus one, of course, has been finished. This hero Zealot going to return to Aya with three drone kills. And one health, and this Zealot with five, so great, great movement. And all of his Corsairs are going to get home, so uh, Dragon doing a great, great job. Another three, four, five gateways being added on. And that's going to allow him to start to flood those ground units. Uh, but Yaj looks like he wants to go for a bit of counter-aggression. He's going to have to be careful. There is Storm available. At least there's the energy for it. Is the upgrade done? Yes, it is. A nice storm going down on those Hydralis, and that is going to put an end to that attack immediately. And here we go. The Corsair is coming back in to the main, to the natural. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, Yaj has pulled all of his overlords away with his units. Uh, so no overlords for him to actually kill anymore. Uh, but of course, this does strengthen DTs. If we see a DT switch coming in by Dragon, uh, there's going to be nothing here to defend it. And this is one of the major issues. And here we go, the Corsairs getting a little bit of an unfavorable engagement there, Yaj, with the good Hydra position. Going to push those back. Of course, plus one attack has been finished. Are we going to see him continue on? Yes, we are. Now, that's going to be Dragoon range. Uh, so, Dragoon range for him now. Uh, Citadel is finishing up, and Dragon should look to take a third base at some point soon. Uh, just because he will be in trouble eventually if Yaj does start to really gain the benefit of this extra gas. I know it's actually going to be six hatcheries from our Zerg player now. Still two hatcheries, one hatchery here. So yeah, six hatcheries from Yaj. Going to give him a lot of power in those pushes. And you can see Dragon, knowing how strong drops are on this map, has already built pylons around the edge of his base. He's using the Corsairs to patrol around this area as well. Of course, this does allow them to jump back in, but he's not going to find any overlords to kill again. And Yaj says, fool me once, shame on me. Wait, I did that wrong, didn't I? Either way, going to be an additional creep colony here. A lot of the Hydra section being made into lurkers, so there's less here to defend the, uh, defend the overlords as they were, but they are very, very stacked up. Now, Dragon, interestingly, going to try his best to take this third gas before taking that mineral only. And now, is this going to cause him any problems? We do finally have a shuttle coming in with a DT, and this is going to be a big, big deal for Dragon. Where is Yaj's overlords? They're over in the natural, but if they're over there, they're not there to detect the DT. And without detection, it's going to be very difficult for Yaj to see this coming. Now, here comes the, here comes the DT. How many drones can it get? It's going to be one, two, three, 
four, possibly a nice drone drill, or nice drone pull. It is going to be four, going to be five. Is he going to be able to get six? Yes, he is. Not going to get that seventh, though. The overlords are close enough, but here we go. The Corsairs swooping in again, going to see if they can get these overlords as they get further away from the Hydralisks. That DT escaping with an inch of his life, going to jump back into that shuttle. And Dragon is going to pull away, getting six drones for the cost of absolutely nothing. Just some shields on his Corsairs. He is going to be feeling very, very good about that. And Yaj going to need to find an answer. Now Yaj is building up a lot of units, but he's not really doing too much with it at the moment. Six hatcheries, obviously a lot of production, plus one, uh, plus one carapace coming in. But he doesn't have any map presence, and this could hurt him later on. Unlike some of the other PVCs we've been seeing, other than the ZBPs as well, uh, you don't see big lurk and contains, you don't see any aggression from the Zerg player here, and is this going to cause Yaj, uh, Yaj some issues? Uh, because the longer he gives a Dragon with this third base, obviously the stronger it becomes. And it looks like Dragon being a little bit overzealous with his Corsairs here, coming back in, trying to do some extra damage, going to see uh, that there is a drone going down there to try and take that base. Uh, but interestingly, Dragon has pulled loaded Dragoons back into his base, so I can't tell if that's just poor pathing, or if he's got them on patrol. I think they're stuck, uh, just because of all these units, which is kind of funny, uh, but they are going to kind of work as like semi-patrolling units. And uh, we do of course have that Overlord gonna scar this base and Dragon immediately looking to take his fourth gas, because he knows uh, that Yaj hasn't been moving out on the map, and this is what he can do. He's got the mobile army now, he has the tech, he has the observers. And finally, Dragon is going to be the one who's going to start putting on some of this pressure. I know it looks like Yaj has moved out, but only to catch the Corsairs. There's only actually two Corsairs left, and that's a big deal. Now, uh, of course, Dragon's Corsair count goes lower and lower, and that does allow a Muta switch to come in from Yaj to take down some of these units. It's going to be Hive from him. There is a Queen's Nest. I'm not too sure whereabouts that's been built. I think he's building all of his tech over here. Uh, but here we go. We've got the big engagement coming in from the middle. There's not actually that many units here from Yaj. But Yaj has the flank coming in. Now, is this flank really going to be able to do too much? He's going to come in from three different angles. But the units, unfortunately, a little bit uh, spread out. And here we go. A nice storm going down on uh, Yaj's units. A lot of Yaj's units actually out of the fight. Here they come. They're going to move in. And Dragon is doing a great job pushing through here. But with another swell of units from those hatcheries. Does Yaj have enough to take this engagement? It's going to be so close. There's so much blue goo. So much Hydralis blood. And with the Dragoon range. They are going to be doing a fantastic job against these lurkers. More units coming in from Yaj here. Trying to keep his lurkers alive. But it looks like there's just too much Protoss coming in. Uh, let's zoom back in. We're going to see that Dragon is on 2-0 against 1-1. A huge storm on the Overlords. The Corsair is going to come in and finish those off. Uh, but it looks like Yaj may have just lost too much. Dragon has broken through the main heartland of the Zerg economy. And all of the Zerg tech buildings are over. He's actually going for three upgrades over here. So if these go down, that is going to be a huge problem for Yaj. Yaj is finding himself supply blocked. A huge storm on the final Lurkers. Could spell the end here for Yaj. He's trying to hold on with the links, Trying to get that Crackling upgrade. But it's not going to be enough. GG. And Dragon is going to even up the series one for one. In our ser first series of today. Now of course that was very impressive by Dragon. Dragon sitting back for a decent amount of time. Building up his army. Uh, unfortunately, Yaj didn't put enough aggression on, and that really did show later on when we did have Dragon with the complete initiative moving immediately across the map, turning up at the Zerg rally point uh, without having any resistance throughout the middle. So, unfortunately for Yaj, that isn't going to work out, uh, but that's actually going to put them 2 all up, sorry. Uh, I miss, uh, miss from the previous score. Uh, but I'm going to head on over to the intro, and we'll be back in just a minute for the next game.